Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning, the first edition of the week on Channels Television, your home for the news. Let's quickly remind you some of the stories we're tracking and expecting to trend today and for the rest of the week. The Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udo Udoma, will be giving a breakdown of the 7.29 trillion naira 2017 budget proposal estimates today. Now, capital expenditure was increased from 1.8 trillion naira in 2016 to 2.24 trillion naira in 2017 with recurrent expenditure put at 2.98 trillion naira of course the conversation has been on with regards how much of this will really actually achieve pushing nigeria out of reflation of infl of recession and so looking at the other parameters as contained in the 2017 budget we've got benchmark for oil at $42.50 per barrel, 2.2 million barrels per day for crude oil output. And of course, we have exchange rate at uh, 305 naira to a dollar at the interbank foreign exchange market. That's been trading at 305 naira 50 cobble for some days now, for some weeks actually. And so those are some of the parameters as contained. And so the, the Honorable Minister of Budget and National Planning will be explaining the rationale behind choosing these particular parameters and channels television has got that on tap for you now tomorrow tuesday december 20th nigeria's 2017 budget will be in focus of a special studio edition of business morning on channels television nigeria in 2017 the economy via budget roadmap will be interactive with five panelists selected from Chevening UK, as well as a cross-section of economists and financial market analysts. Be part of the program on all our social media platforms. And if you're sending in your messages, you can use the hashtag Budget 2017 round table. We're glad to get your comments, of course. And as I said, it's a very interactive program, so you need to be part of it. Well, here's a poll we've got running also on our Twitter handle at this morning. We're asking, how would you assess Nigeria's six-month-old flexible foreign exchange market regime? Good, fair, poor, or none of the above? Of course, we already got some comments on this particular issue, but we'll be collating the data uh, today and we'll let you know how Nigerians actually view this particular issue. But let's turn our attention to the Nigeria energy market. Now, it was quite a very busy week for energy stocks listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange last week, and we saw particular, mm -hmm. uh, particularly positive activity around Forte Oil, Total, and Owando, as well as Seplat and Mobile. But at least in, in the the particular you know, positive order, we had Forte Oil, we had Total and Owando leading oil and gas index at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But let's review how these stocks, about seven of them, we track for you uh, on the program, finished off on Friday. So largely no change again on Con Oil, MRS, Seplat and Total on Friday and that's the first we noticed for Total for the week just ended but we see the volume of shares that were actually traded by investors. Uh, Forte Oil was the top loser on that particular index and we saw that coming in at 116 naira 24 cobble at the end of trade on friday and mobile oil came in at 280 naira now on the other page owando what seemed to be the only price gainer on friday at the end of that session the equity came in at four naira 34 cobble as a closing price with volume at 1,571,435 units exchange. So no movement in Seplat and Total. But cumulatively, as the week ended, we saw the index coming in 7.36% positive, with year-to-date also improving appreciably to minus 6.65 percent if you've been following this particular index you will know that it had some very bloody um numbers a couple of weeks ago but it's actually improving as we end the last trading day late last trading week in the month of december price earnings at 56.1 and we have dividend yield at 1.9 percent 
Last week, the Nigerian government formally exited the existing joint venture cash course arrangement with the international oil companies for more than four decades, citing funding challenges. So what are the benefits of this move to Nigeria at this time? There's been a lot of perspectives, a lot of conversation with regards to this particular issue. But let's get some perspectives from Dolakmo Oni, who is the head of energy research at Ecobank. It's good to have you on the program, Dolakmo. Good morning. Good morning, Harriet. Thanks for having me. Welcome back from the weekend. And we're talking oil issues now. Nigeria plans to borrow, um, well, first of all, we're looking at Nigeria's borrowing plans vis-a-vis -vis what's going on in the oil sector. But taking a look at the particular story from last week, I know we had conversations on this, but let's still go over the issues again. And there's been so, many, so much talk around it already. Do you think it's a right move for Nigeria? Well, basically, it gets us out of our depths, and I think that's a good one. Um, it is the right move. It is the right move. Um, it also helps the IOCs to, um, to, to, to do what they've been trying to do for years, but they've been held back by our lack of cash calls. So basically, I think it's a good move. Um, but what I would like to caution or what I would like to stress is that we need to be very cautiously optimistic about the... Um, savings or the additions to revenue that it will generate because um, i mean there are a lot of figures being mentioned but i don't see that happening immediately and even when we are able to bring new production on stream there will be significant limitations to how much revenue it can add to our current um, revenue from oil so it's it's some caution I'd, I'd like to put out there as well but then we also have to remember that uh, you know the federal government says it's no longer funding the partnership with IOCs because it's cash-trapped. What is the funding arrangement with um, Shell, Total, Chevron, those oil companies that uh, Nigeria does business with, and, of course, uh, Ajib Oil? Okay, good. So, essentially, what has happened is, you know, because um, the first set of contracts with which we started producing oil in Nigeria were joint venture contracts. So, it's more like an equity relationship where federal government owned 55%, the IOCs owned... A combination of 45 percent and they needed to make sure that they have uh, a way where they share 